Hi and welcome to this very special edition of This Just In. I'm Marsha Voice and with me as usual, my co-host today, Justin Marvel. Now we have a big show for you today as we have a very special guest. Well, a little bit later, we'll get into some, you know, previewing game three of the NBA finals. But guys, you know how we do it here on This Just In with our guests. We've had a former NBA player. We've had a current NBA general manager. We've had a WN. NBA coach. Now, our special guest today has the distinction of being our first current NBA player to grace this so this show. So, Justin, I'm going to give you the honors of introducing today's special guest. Well, as you mentioned, Marsha, uh, WNBA coach, this person happens to be his son, also a huge Florida State University player, but current Los Angeles Clippers guard slash forward, none other than Terrence Mann. Welcome to the show, Terrence. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks for taking your, well, vacation time out to come and join the show. Sorry to have to say that. So I'll just jump right into it because, well, your Clippers were just eliminated. Sorry to have to start on a somber note. But considering that your team was put together with the, you know, goals of winning NBA titles, how hard has it been for you watching these NBA finals Without your Clippers in it, um, I don't. No, I don't watch. Well, it hasn't been hard. For me. <laughs> I don't watch that. Um, you know, I'm sure it's a good series. Uh, I don't even know what it is. Is it is it one one two zero? Oh, oh two love to my sons. Two love, two love. No. Yeah, two two zero. So yeah, I mean, good luck to them. Now, Tyrant, Tyrant. Take us through your season a bit. You know, you went from hardly playing in the playoffs last season to dropping 39 points against Utah, a close elimination game. You know, talk us through your mindset at that point in time. Um, well, uh, yeah, so I didn't play much in my first year in the playoffs, um, but I knew that I, I felt that I was ready. Um, I felt that I was an NBA player. I felt that I just needed a chance to, you know, get out there and do what I got to do. So, you know, anytime the time came, I just try to take advantage of it as much as I could. Um, you know, whether that be scoring the ball or defensively guarding the best player, whatever it is to make an impact, you know, on my teammates and on my coaches, I tried to do. So that type of mindset is what I had, you know, the whole season. And, um, you know, game six of the second round versus Jazz, I just knew – you know, the game before that, I knew how they were guarding me. And that game, I knew I, were gonna, I was going to have to take a lot of shots for us to win easily. Um, so, yeah, that's just what I did. And we still didn't win easily. We were down 22 at one point in that game uh, just because of how hard they were playing. And they would, knew it was an elimination game, and they didn't want to go home. Um, but I just, you know, felt like we wanted it more, and we pushed and ended up winning the game. Was it, was it difficult to fill in for Kawhi Leonard? You know, in terms of a mindset perspective, you know, did you think, OK, there's a lot of pressure on me, greater expectations and so forth? No, because it wasn't difficult because um, I wasn't trying to fill in his mm -hmm. spot. You know what I mean? I was just trying to play my game. And I knew, you know, my job wasn't to fill Kawhi's role, you know. So um, I just did what I did and it worked. So... Considering, though, you know, you come off of a big playoff run, a career high, 39 points in that uh, closeout game against Utah, are there any expectations for you personally for a bigger role on this Clippers team going into next season? Um, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say expectations. I just, like, it's just another year, and I'm going to do what I have to do to prove myself again. Uh, whether that's starting off the year not playing much again or 
starting off the year playing a lot. I don't, I don't really care. You know, I know that I feel that I could play in this league. So, you know, whatever happens, happens, and I'm going to just play my game. Now, you hear a lot of players talk about, okay, growing up, they admired this player or the other player. Is there any particular player you emulated growing up or you patterned yourself after? Uh, no, specifically okay. patterning my game after somebody, no. But my favorite player was Allen Iverson and Kobe Bryant. Uh -huh. uh, right. So, you know, I always wanted to dress like Allen Iverson with the sleeve and the headband, you know, and the arm band and stuff like that. And I just, you know, growing up, I loved the Lakers. Um, and Kobe was my favorite player. So, you know, those two stuck with me. You know, I got a Kobe tattoo on me. I'm going to get an Allen Iverson tattoo. Um, two guys just, you know, helped me stay in love with the game just by watching them play. And then on your current team now, what is it like playing with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, for instance? Um, it's, it's, it's a surreal feeling, you know, sometimes I feel like I got to pinch myself, like I'm in a dream, you know, being out there with them on the court, um, you know, two bona fide superstars, two, you know, probably future Hall of Famers. So, you know, just being out there with those two is crazy. Um, and yeah, you know, sometimes it doesn't feel real, but it is what it is and I'm here, so. Well, speaking of being here in the NBA, um, this is only, what, two years in for you. Do you have a most memorable moment in your career already? Or do you just say, you know, this is just two years in, so I'm not thinking like that already? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I would say I have a most memorable moment so far. Um, I would say one of them, one of the main ones is probably we were down, I want to say we were down 30 to Atlanta. Um, one game in the regular season and T. Lou ended up, you know, taking all the starters out and putting the whole bench in and then we ended up coming all the way back and winning the game. Um, so that was just one of, you know, my favorite games to be a part of. Uh, you know, it helped me prove myself, it helped me, you know, show everybody that they can trust me out there and it was just cool. Uh, I really liked that game. So that game will always stick with me. Now, Tyrant, some would say you didn't have what is now seen as the typical journey toward the NBA. You did four years at Florida State. You had a stint in the G League. You had a surgery in your rookie year. Did you ever doubt at any stage, you know, you actually would have made it to where you are now? Um, no, I never doubted it because I knew if I started to doubt, then it probably wouldn't happen. So uh -huh. um, I try to just always tell myself that, you know, whenever the time comes, take advantage of it and it's coming you know er, you know once you get to the nba most people you know most times you get an opportunity to prove yourself you know everybody i feel like everybody gets one opportunity at the least so um i knew that was going to happen i knew you know after i recovered from the surgery um i would have to prove myself just because i am a four-year guy you know i'm a second round late second round pick pick 48 um you know so nobody really you know that doesn't hold any weight for people once you get to the NBA. And I knew I was just going to have to put my weights on and be heavy. Um, so in that regard, as you said, you are always ready for the moment to prove yourself. Does it help then that your mom, a huge friend of the show, big shameless plug here, but does it help that your mom is a coach or does it make it even worse considering the pressure you may get from you know, home circles. Yeah. Um, no, no pressure. No pressure from that. Um, it definitely helps that my mom's a coach uh, just because she knows, you know, what it takes mentally to be a great player. And she helps me with that. So, you know, having her around, having her, you know, have great knowledge of the game is just great for me. Before I let you hop out there, there's another question I want to ask because your mom kind of danced around this one. <laughs> I have to believe with your mom being a coach, your stepdad being a coach, and your brother as well being a, college, a collegiate player, am I correct? That two-on-two -two sometimes plays at this household. So Terrence, who pairs <laughs> up with who and what did the series score look like? Please tell me that there is two-on-two -two in the mad household. Um, no, there's not. There's not two on two right now. 
<laughs> no two on two. My my little my, my little brother has been hurt for a while. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's been having knee surgery. My mom doesn't play anymore. My stepdad doesn't play anymore. There's no two on two. Um, you know, for the most part, since they got married, I was probably the only one playing for a while because my brother was hurt. So yeah, no two on two. <laughs> but if there was, whoever was on uh-huh. my win so that's <laughs> I, I would ex- i would expect you to say nothing else that's all now terence you mentioned you know about your journey and how you were a four-year at florida state etc what advice would you have for any young player trying to make it coming out of college you know probably not seeing themselves as a first round pick in the draft what advice would you have for them to stay motivated um i would just say you know wherever you're at you're there for a reason and um you know just stick to what you think what you believe if you believe that you you should be there then then go all out go for it you know if you don't feel like you should be there and maybe it's not for you but i feel like you know once you once you get in the environment where you feel like you can you know be an nba player or want to be then you should just try everything to do it and um you know being in the nba it's a it's a it's a thing where every decision you make affects it you know, every decision you make on and off the court, you know, you got to make the right decisions. You got to be, you know, every day's an interview. You know, every time somebody comes up to you, they're seeing how you are, who you are. You know, they know who you are. So they're just trying to see what you're going to say, what you're going to do. You know what I mean? So, you know, you just got to be locked in, be yourself. And if you feel like you're an NBA player, then then you are. So go get it. Last question for me, Mark. So sorry. Very last question. Mm-hmm. Your two seasons in the NBA just so happened to coincide with the, you know, coronavirus pandemic. So from a personal point of view, how has it been to be in the league during this situation? Um, it, it's been tough. It's been tough for me just because um, my draft class has, especially if you make the playoffs in, in this from our draft class, you've been going almost since pre-draft with no break. You know, you've been going, you, you get drafted, you have summer league, then after summer league, you have training camp, your rookie year, then you have the season, then the season stopped in February, but then it's, the season stopped early March, but then it's like, okay, is the season coming back in two weeks? So you're still training, getting ready, and then you see, okay, it's getting pushed further out, but you're hearing, you know, um, talks about a bubble that you might play in. So you're still training, you know what I mean? Then they announce, oh yes, there's a bubble. So now you gotta get ready for that. You gotta get back in shape to play again. Then you're in the bubble all the way till October, like a guy like myself, um, who's there, you know, September, October, whenever I was there. Um, And then, you know, the season starts again in November, December, you know, you gotta be ready. So, and then a whole nother season and playoff. Then we go to the Western Conference Finals. So I just really got done, done playing basketball for the last two, two and a half years. Um, so it's been, it's been rough, but it is what it is. And, you know, I, I guess I was built for it. So then, Terrence, finally, what can we expect for you for the next season? Um, just me, for me to go out there, play hard, um, you know, prove people wrong, like I'm going to continue to try to do. And, you know, hopefully win a ring. And we, we would definitely love to see that. So we're cheering for you all the way from Barbados. Terrence, thank you so much for sharing with us and taking some valuable time out of your vacation to spend some time with our viewers. Ladies and gentlemen, Terrence Mann of the LA Clippers joining us here on this Just In. But guys, we will take a quick break here. And when we come back, it's all about the, about the NBA Finals, that preview to Game 3. Stay with us. Thank you. Thank you, Terrence. Uh, Can I be a legend? Search your soul and answer me this question. Do you think I have what it takes to be great? But still be humble and learn from my mistakes. Uh. Just remind viewers to check back for the start. 
Thank you for staying with us here on This is Justin. And if you were just joining us, well, you would have missed him. We had the Terrence Clippers. <laughs> I almost said Terrence Clippers. The LA Clippers Terrence man as our special guest on the show. So if you missed it, stay with us. And then as soon as we wrap up, you can go right back to the top to catch everything Terrence had to say about his season that just completed, the playoff run, and generally what it's like being an NBA player, even in this pandemic situation. But guys, we're looking ahead to that game three of the NBA finals between the Phoenix Suns and the Milwaukee Bucks. And joining me now is Neil Hoyt. So the full gang back together all on place as we look ahead to this you know, game three. Thankfully, Justin is not wearing his shirt. Thankfully. You're we're, thankful for, lucky. we're thankful for small mercy. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. You all are only lucky, right, that Terrence is a Caribbean native and a Clippers player, so obviously wearing a Phoenix Suns jersey might be too soon. But I had intentions of changing the shirt big, um, during the show. I was like, nah, everyone is in their branded logo, so let's get it. Well, I'm even more thankful that Terrence was our special guest today because, yes... <laughs> So, Neil, I'm going to start with you because actually I can try to shut out Justin for most of this show. Neil, mm -hmm. game three, NBA Finals. Is this a do or die game for the Milwaukee Bucks? Oh, there is absolutely no doubt that this is a, a must win game for the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, when you look at what the Bucks are up against, you know, no team has ever come back from three love. Let's, let's be honest, right? Um, I know LeBron James would have set a little precedent there um, a few years ago. By coming back from 3-1, but you would have a better chance of coming back from 3-1 than you would have coming back from, you know, 3 loves. So the, the, the Bucks definitely need to get into the swing of things. They need to make some adjustments, which we will get to. Um, sorry, I was a little distracted. But yes, um, they do need to, to win game three because um, it, it is proven that Phoenix is playing at a very high level, right? When you look at Chris Paul, you look at Devin Booker. You look at uh, just how the team is just gelling, the three-pointers. They had 23 pointers made in game one and then in game two, and they came out very aggressive and kind of blew them out. So um, it is important for the Bucks, especially at home, to win the next game for sure because if they don't, then you now have to get four games in a row, which means you have to win your one at home, and then you have to go and win it on the road back in Phoenix. That's you know a very tall ask for the Milwaukee Bucks. And, um, yeah, it, it, you know, you're seeing glimpses of um, – you're seeing Giannis, not glimpses. You are seeing Giannis. Giannis is playing absolutely fantastic basketball. Drew Holiday, um, Chris Middleton, they're kind of not there. They're not where you want them to be. So um, it's very important that they win it. Uh, Bud has to make some adjustments. The guys have to come up with a – it literally is an elimination game, even though they don't see it as that. But, yes, they have to come out to try to win that game. Uh, Justin, I've been joking since these finals started. Whatever Giannis has for his knees, as a person with two bad knees, I want some. Whatever it is, I want some. But Justin, is this a do die game for the Bucks? No so bias here. Before we go further, as to your point, Marsha, uh, me also, I have no meniscus in my left knee. I want whatever they give to Giannis as well. Like, I think this finals is more of a, I don't know, a promotion from Milwaukee's medical staff <laughs> than anything else. Because how is Giannis not only playing, but playing at, I don't know, say like historic levels? Like, who is the last person to score 20 points in, the, in a quarter of an NBA Finals game? What, Michael Jordan against my sons in 1993, I think. Like, this is ridiculous what Giannis is doing, you know, just a week um, after a hyper extended knee. But to get to your question, finally, yes, of course, this has to be like a do or die game. Like, Milwaukee has to treat this like an elimination game. Neil made mention of it. No team has ever come back from a three-love hole. Uh, and I think there are 143 instances in the seven-game series of teams falling into a three-love hole. 143 times those teams have lost. So it's easy to say that you cannot afford to fall into this three-love hole. And not only that, let's throw away the numbers. Yes, Phoenix is a very inexperienced team, but they still have CP3, who is a veteran playoff performer. So too Jay Crowder, who we talked about last season, helped Miami get to the NBA Finals, has been a part of your um, Boston teams that made it to Eastern Conference Finals, Marshall. He was in Utah. This is a valued playoff performer. 
we've seen and we've heard the Mike Tuck, Marty Williams, how great he is with these young players. And he is yeah. a great coach, who, in my estimation, was robbed of coach of the year. And not because I'm a homer here, but this Phoenix Suns team has shown us all playoffs long. They are a great road team. They're a great home team. And there are no specific or glaring weaknesses on this team. You can't afford to fall three love down to this team. Far less two love because after game two, I figured the series is over. Because reality is, Phoenix has shown all playoffs long that they can win games on the road. They were the best road team during the regular season. And in three prior playoff series against the Lakers, against the Nuggets, and against the Clippers, they closed up those series on the road. Milwaukee is in trouble, and they have to treat tonight like an elimination game. Well, Neil, I always say, you know, looking at these knees, the knees aren't going to last forever. That is the reality. That The drugs, the adrenaline, sorry, the medicine, the adrenaline, it is going to run out. Yep. So clearly the Bucs have to make some kind of adjustments. What adjustments do you think they can make, if any? Um, Adjustments. Well, first things first, it has to start with them, right? It has to start with um, kind of the... the you got to want it, right? You're in the NBA Finals. You are literally there. Yes, you're in a two-love hole. Yes, it looks bad right now. But you have to want to play basketball if your name is not Ante, uh, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo. He has come to play basketball. Whatever, uh, you know, Justin and, and, and you, Marsh, you all have alluded to, whatever treatment they're doing with him, whatever they've given him, whatever, he has come to play. You didn't have to give him anything for his heart or, or his willingness to, to show up in these finals. However... Um, we are seeing Chris. Queen Marcus of the Go Talk podcast. Oh dear. Yannis, <laughs> oh, oh dear. Oh dear. Shout out. Shout out. Uh, Dwayne Marcus. Um, Yannis, uh, number one fan. Um, but um, yeah, Yannis has come to play. So what the other guys have to do, especially Chris Middleton, they have to step up. They have to find ways of of of. Well, he has to find ways to be more assertive um, in this game. You know? um, we've seen it before in the playoffs and even all season long. Giannis will get you to the mountain top. He will get you three quarters of the way there. Um, Chris, take you over the mountain top. Drew Holiday, he has to be more assertive on both sides of the basketball. To me, he looks ordinary. Normally, Drew Holiday is, is a guy that can play uh, very good defense on the wing players, particularly the point guard, as well as play great defense. I mean, sorry, great offense, um, shooting the ball and making great decisions. But for whatever reason, in those first two games, particularly in game two, it seems as if he has he's 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 not focused. He's he's discombobulated, if you will, right? And and it, yeah, you you like me? You like me? I went to school, you know. Um, but no, seriously, um, Drew Holiday needs to be more impactful on the game. He needs to assert himself on defense. He needs to not get lost in the shuffle or or or, or because he he would um and, and there were some matchups where he was uh, guarding uh Devin Booker. So Devin Booker pulls him up, fade away. He sometimes was matched up. Um, well, he hardly matched up against Chris Paul. But he needs to find ways to impact. Regardless of who he's marking from one to three, he needs to find a way to impact the basketball game a bit more. He seems too passive. He seems um, inconsistent. He seems like he's not focusing on, on the task at hand. And it's permeating into his offense. He's turning over the ball. He's not shooting the ball well. He looks out of sorts. He needs to find... Whatever Giannis has, I mean, you're all talking about the, the medication and the treatment, but he needs to find whatever that Greek feet got in his chest. He needs to find it. Chris Milton needs to find it. And, and to me, if they can see, the, well, they're seeing the leadership of Giannis. If they can see the leadership of um, Chris Middleton, then I, I think it would kind of permeate going down the line. Now, I know Justin's going to talk about but what Bud would need to do. I mean, he's been saying that all season long, so I'm going to let him get to that. But I think for me, I'm going to speak toward the heart of the Milwaukee Bucks. They have to come out particularly in front of their home crowd, and they have to make a statement to say, not only are we in the finals, not only do we want to win, but we are taking these next two games in Milwaukee. Justin Neal seems to be reading my mind because I was actually going to ask up next, you know, who needs to step up more between Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday? Your thoughts? Well, I wanted to get to, I will, we will get to that just shortly, but just mm -hmm. give me two minutes to rant or my typical <laughs> Mike Gooden holds a rant. Um, do, you, do you need a trumpet song before we start? You know, you need a song off? This okay. I'll give him an ease. I think the number one thing that Coach Bud has to do right now, 
and you're going to have to live with the role players, you have to trap that Chris Paul pick and roll. Mm -hmm. Whoever's guarding, you just have to double team and trap that and get the ball out of Chris Paul's hands. But in trapping him, you have to make sure you stay home on Devin Booker and the trap doesn't come from there. Because in my estimation, we've seen the combined numbers of both players. You're going to have to tell yourself the others have to beat you. And by the others, I mean Mikael Bridges, I mean Jay Crowder, and um, DeAndre Aiden. You're going to have to live with that the campaign, the Cam Johnson. Yes, Neil alluded to the fact that we hit 23 pointers in game two. But right now, you can't let Phoenix superstars beat you. So you're going to have to trap that pick and roll. Unfortunately for them, fortunately for my team, Mikael Bridges did go off for 27 points in game two. But you're going to have to tell yourself, we are going to live with that going forward. Are you consistently good enough to do that over a stretch of seven games? Because clearly, after games one and game two, you found out that Chris Paul and Devin Booker are those guys who will do that. So if the, your defensive focus has to be on that. The second adjustment I will make to Bud, and let me say this, huh? Bud has been trying to make adjustments throughout the first two games. You saw it in game one. It just never, nothing never worked. Uh, they switched everything. Chris Paul and Devin Booker went after Brooke Lopez. They played under the screen. They still hunted Brooke Lopez and then Bobby Portis. They tried everything, and that's Phoenix just, as Chris Paul alluded to in his press conferences, they played enough basketball and are so well coached and prepared that they know every single pick and roll coverage coming and they know the adjustment to me. So on the offensive side, I'm going to say this. I love Brooke Lopez as a player, but you can't play Brooke Lopez and Giannis together for the fact that you want to minimize their minutes on the court. Well, that being said, to explain what I mean, when Giannis and Brooke Lopez is on the court together, Brooke Lopez becomes a seven-foot Clay Thompson. And yeah. yes, he can th shoot the three, but that is not his strength. You want Brooke Lopez in the paint dominating because he's a seven-footer. And outside of DeAndre Aiden, and we now have injuries to both Dario Sarch and um, I want to say Tory, Tory Craig. We don't have any size. So I would bring Brooke Lopez off the bench, let him be the person to spell Yanis at the five. So all of Brooke Lopez's touches are in the paint and not beyond the arc. Because Phoenix can guard Brooke Lopez when he's up there. But as you saw in minutes early in game two and early in game one, Drake Crowder, Jay Crowder cannot match up with Brooke Lopez if he's getting touches inside the paint. And I think that is what Bud has to do going forward. Sorry to go on my soliloquies of rant. So you asked me... Rant of it, rant of it. So you asked me then to get into the next segment. Who needs to step up more, whether it be Chris Middleton or um, whether it be Drew Holiday? I will say this. When I look at Chris Middleton's road and home splits, I've told Neil before on this show over and over again, I fully expect Chris Middleton to be good tonight simply because he's good at home. That's what he does. Um, I think he's scoring or averaging 24 points per game when he's at home, shooting like 48% from the field and 38% from three. Those numbers drop significantly when he goes on the road. I think the shooting is like 38%. Hold on, let me look. Sorry, it's like 40% from the field and 32 from deep. So I fully expect Chris Middleton to be that guy tonight. I think it's going to be a handful for Mikael Bridges. So to answer your question, question, it has to be has to be Drew, Drew Holiday. We sat down and watched in these finals. There was a span, and I could not believe it because Drew Holiday is a player I like. He missed 21 of 28 field goals at one point in these NBA yeah. finals. 21 of 28. He is yeah. shooting 31% from the field. And I think, let's look down, 14, 14% from beyond the arc. That cannot cut it, especially when you're being guarded by the likes of Chris Paul and Cameron Payne. You have to attack those matchups. You're just too good to be this guy. Now, for those who are just joining us, because I've seen a couple of people jump in, if you're looking for Terrence Mann, we've already spoken to Terrence, so feel free to stay with us as we continue to preview Game 3 of the NBA Finals. And as soon as we're finished, you can go right back up to the top of this stream and catch that full interview with Terrence Mann of the LA Clippers. But guys, but guys, focusing again on these NBA Finals, who has been your MVP so far? 
who is starting Neil? with Neil or me? I'll go, I'll go to Neil, yes. I'm not starting with first. None of these questions because you already have a bias. We've clearly established that. I mean, I don't even. Neil, I, 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 I won't even lie to you, Marsha. I, I, I don't even know why we have him on the show, to be honest. Because I mean, I, I, I brought, hold on. I brought balance. I brought a Milwaukee Bucks banner behind me. I don't even wear my Phoenix Suns jersey. I've been object. You know, I, I've, I've brought the balance. Smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Smoke and mirrors. I'm just saying, dipsy doodling. Um, who I, what I would say is that um, for me, the MVP has to be Chris Paul, right? I mean. When you look at what Chris Paul is doing um, so far, especially you've heard all of the noise, you've heard all of the, he, you know, he's never been there. He, he's never done it. He, you know, is always injured when he gets to this point in the whole playoff race. Like, to me, I think he is showing that not only is he happy to be there, but it's not enough just to be there. He's not playing as though, oh, I've arrived, I made it to the finals, I've gotten out the conference finals, so look at me. He is playing at such a high level. I mean, how much did he have in game one? Uh, what it was, uh, 30, I can't remember, but it was a lot. <laughs> he had a lot of uh, points, assists. He's making the right decisions. Yes, he had some early turnovers in game two, but you know what? He is steadying the ship of the Phoenix Suns. At the end of the day, we all know if you took Chris Paul off of this Phoenix Suns team, they wouldn't even be at the, in this position. Uh, granted, you could say that about Devin Booker, but you know what? Chris Paul is that leadership. He is the veteran. He is the the uh, the leadership. The, sorry, the leader. He keeps them um, in control, poised. He is scoring the ball at a high clip. He is shooting very well from the from the, um, the the field, and he is distributing the ball. Granted, here and there are turnovers, but he is playing absolutely well. Even his defense seems to have improved a bit. So he's playing really well. If shoot, not if should he continue at this pace. Yes, I know Devin Booker is going to get his points. I know Devin Booker will continue to play well. But for me, it has to be Chris Paul, man. Because so many players have gone to this level. And you've seen them kind of like, yes, I finally made it to the finals. And I'm finally here. But all right, so let me just kind of look at Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton is kind of, you know, maybe he's feeling a bit of the pressure. You know what I mean? Giannis is playing really well. But Chris Paul, having not been here and, and everybody looking at his legacy, looking at his career, saying... Oh, you know, it would it would be an unfinished thing if he doesn't get a, a finals um a finals uh championship. You know, he 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 would be incomplete in his legacy in his career. So just to see him not only come arrive and take center stage, this man is what 36, 37? You know, and he's thirty six. He's had multiple injuries throughout his career, particularly in these playoffs. He had the uh, corona uh, uh positive positive test there the other day, like. Man, Seriously. but you know what? But you know it. what, Marsha? The reason, granted, you know, we are old school players. We are people that don't like to see that kind of stuff. But you know what? It, 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 the reason why I would allow it is because he, he is going to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes mm. to win this NBA championship. He does not care about anything other than making the most of this. And to me, with the play and that mentality, he has to be the MVP of these finals. Mm. Justin, you agree? I'll say, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Hey. So, <laughs> that's a, um, yeah, I don't like the floppy either, Marsha, but he's on my team now, so. All of a sudden, no. So you have to turn up. All, all of a sudden, you turn a blind eye to Yeah, Marsha, you see that, you yeah, see that impartial? Double you standards. That, you that double on. standards. Mm -hmm. There it is. You can't see it. Just like Kurt Angle, you can't Oh, sorry, wrong wrestling. <laughs> but. <laughs> John Cena. This is John Cena. Yes, John, just like John Cena. Can't, can't yeah, I see it. see it. But can I put like Coach Mike Budenholzer here as my MVP? No? Can't. No. <laughs> no, honestly, <laughs> no, honestly, um, yeah. It's kind of split right now. I'm a lean towards Chris Paul. I wanted to say Devin Booker because I didn't like uh, Chris Paul's fourth quarter like in game two. Um, they started doing what I suggested, which was trapping the pick and roll. And we got two terrible turnovers, two lazy passes, both to Jay Crowder that led to turnovers and easy buckets. And we saw in that fourth quarter of game two, Devin Booker had three big threes. And I think two of them came every time that, you know, Milwaukee was making a run. He hit two of them to kind of ice the game and, and, and keep them at bay. But unlike younger people, I am not a prisoner of the moment. So I'm not just going to say that just because that's the last thing I saw. 
I think it's going to split and it will lean towards Chris Paul because of the shooting efficiency that he's had in this series, which has been particularly ridiculous for a player that's only my height, like six feet. And I even wonder if Chris Paul is six feet at times, but for a player six feet going about going against a very, very tall Milwaukee team, because that Milwaukee team is extremely long. Like you have seven foot, Brooke Lopez, 6'11", uh, Yanis Antetokounmpo. I'm not sure if you all saw the play when Chris Paul drove right into Yanis, like bucked, bucked him off and later fin- like finished over the top of him. Like, the hell? So just because of how Chris Paul finished the game one and the assist, and as Neil mentioned, the leadership and keeping Phoenix on even keel, like for such a young team, right? And I don't think it is being stressed enough how young this team is. Like Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, Mikel Bridges, this is their first go around in the playoffs. Like first ever. Like none of them have ever had a playoff run. And for them to be so poised, so even killed, yes, a lot of that has to go on Monty Williams. You know the amount of credit I give to James Jones, and not just because he is a friend of the show, but he is the architect of what we've seen here. But Chris Paul being on the floor, being able to keep the, you know, the you would figure at some point their inexperience would shine through. But it really has not at all because Chris Paul, for a bad metaphor, is the engine that could. So it, it, it must be Chris Paul for no with a slight edge. But if I get if I see another performance from um, Devin Booker that we saw in game two, I will lean towards Devin Booker. I think the race is close, but like Neil, I'll give the edge to CP3. Uh, let us know in the comments if you agree with these two. Is Chris Paul the relative shoe-in for the finals MVP title at this stage? But guys, you know, we're in game three. I kind of felt, Justin, I know I told you I, I was feeling a sweep um, in favor of the Suns and you were telling me no, but I still think it could happen. Not that I would want it to happen, but it is, it is looking likely. likely. So, Looking ahead to the end of this series then, Neil, starting with you, who's more likely to get back to the finals? These two? Um, I'll be honest and say I don't know. I say uh, for me, I think it would be more likely to be Phoenix Suns simply because if Milwaukee loses this, we can see a different Milwaukee team come next year. Right? I Masha from Bye-Bot. Masha, Bye-Bot, Bud gone. <laughs> Sorry about that, Brooke Lopez. Thank you for the memories. Everything that is not Giannis Antetokounmpo and the deer, gone. So, um, in my opinion, I think what's going to happen is that um, Phoenix will more than like, well, has the better chance to get back here. No, will they make it back? Because we have to look at some things going into the season, right? We have to look, and to me, I mean, I'm a Laker fan, and I could tell you, I am afraid of the Golden State Warriors when back to full strength and whatever moves they make in the offseason. You still have to look at the uh, Los Angeles Lakers. The Los Angeles Clippers are still there and thereabouts. Uh, you have the Denver Nuggets. You have the Utah Jazz. You have so many teams out west that could be in this very same position as well. right? I'm not taking it away from Phoenix. Phoenix played very good basketball all postseason long. They've shown that they are the better team anytime they step on the floor. Um, however, to get back, You'll be looking at Chris Paul being a year older. You'll be looking at Jay Crowder being a year older. You'll be looking at, yes, they have a young nucleus. Um, they, they would be obviously a year older, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. But you have to look at just because, because let's be honest, everybody's been kind of fortunate not to be uh, hampered by injuries in terms of the Phoenix Suns, right? They haven't really had any big injuries, knock on wood. But we've even seen uh, the Bucks have a major injury to Giannis Antetokounmpo. We've seen it with um, the Lakers throughout the regular season. We've seen it with um, the Denver Nuggets and Jamal Murray. We've seen injuries kind of hamper a lot of the teams that should be here, not be there. Again, not taking anything from the Phoenix Suns, but for them to get back to this position, so many things would have to go right, and so many things would have to go wrong for a lot of other big teams. I just don't see them getting back here. But if we're talking about between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Phoenix Suns, I got to say Phoenix because... The Milwaukee Bucks will not look the same way should they get um should they lose the championship, particularly if they get sweet. My goodness gracious, that's the end of that. Well, my vote is for neither, but Justin, what about uh, you? Who's, who's more likely to get back? For the reasons that Neil talked about the Suns, is the reason why I will say Milwaukee is the more likely of the two. Uh, I will start with Phoenix's side first. 
Um, they're going to have a lot of questions in the offseason. I think Robert Sarver has already said he's likely to pay Chris Paul what he wants because he's going to be an impending free agent. And I think Chris Paul wants three years, $100 million. And I, I believe that Robert Sarver is going to pay that money. money. Get anything you but want from also, me. Anything. But also, at the same time, he's going to have to pay DeAndre Ayton and Mikael Bridges. I get the sense he will, you know, dip, it, dip into his pockets, although he's not that owner. I think for this particular team, he will. But to touch on what Neil said, the path is not going to be as easy as it will be next season. Like, as much as I'm a Suns fan and you can't take away anything from what Phoenix has shown this run, reality is we've also benefited from a lot of luck. We can't bank on LeBron James being hurt again. I mean, we can with Anthony Davis because that is who <laughs> Anthony Davis is. But you can't bank on LeBron James being hurt. You can't bank on Jamal Murray being injured. You can't also bank on Kawhi Leonard being injured. And we benefited from those three injuries in three successive series. Neil alluded to the point, Clay Thompson is coming back and we have to think he's going to be fully healthy with two years of recuperation. Utah Jazz is still there. This is a loaded Western Conference. Clippers, Lakers, Jazz, the Warriors, the Nuggets. Not even mentioning the Mavericks or the uh-huh. Portland Trail Blazers. Then when you look at the East, Neil says he thinks that things are going to be blown up. I don't think so because Coach Bud will buy himself some time because of Giannis' injury. I don't, I, I don't know what miracle stuff they have going on there in Milwaukee. But he will be able to say he got the team to the finals. On top of that, Giannis, Drew Holiday, and Chris Milton are all locked up on long-term contracts for the foreseeable future. And then when you look at the state of the Eastern Conference, sorry to say this, Marsh, you're not going to want to hear this. Boston is getting worse by the second. Then you look... This, this show is not about Boston. Oh. Let's focus, guys. Mm, focus. Okay. Oh, focus. Yeah. Yeah, okay. All of a sudden, let's focus. Philadelphia focus. is likely going to end up trading Ben Simmons. Will they get better with that trade? I don't know. Um, when you look, Atlanta is still another star away from contending because they couldn't even beat Milwaukee when Giannis was missing the last two games. Oh. New York, still young, inexperienced, and we have seen to call Brooklyn. I'm going to get there. <laughs> you see him in New York. That is not a free agent destination no longer, and their draft process has kind of been shaky. You've heard me say I don't know why they didn't pick Tyrese Halliburton in this last draft. So after all that being said and done, the only competition out east for Milwaukee as currently constructed is the Brooklyn Nets. Like, like, so the path back to the finals is considerably easier out east for Milwaukee than it is for Phoenix in the west. And Milwaukee doesn't have the off-season, I don't know, questions that Phoenix has because yeah. Phoenix, to get back to where they are, are going to have to pay a lot of money for the three players I just mentioned. Well... Milwaukee's top three are all saying through for the foreseeable future. So, guys, do you agree? You know, tell us in the comments which team do you think will have a better chance of getting back to the finals next season. So, who will win Game Three and why? Neil, straight to the point. Exactly. Getting my microphone. Sorry. Um, I think that Milwaukee will win game three uh, because I think Giannis and Bud and everybody is kind of understanding the gravity of the situation that they're in. They need to win. As much as it's not technically an elimination game, you could as well call it an elimination game. Simply because you lose this, you go down 0-3, there's no coming. But well, the odds are so stacked against your favor, you know, that is just, you, you go in four straight. And that does not happen at this stage of the playoffs. Um, so I think Milwaukee will come out there at home. Um, you know, they're, they're, you know, Milwaukee is a great um, town, great atmosphere. They have great fans. Um, Giannis will, to me, he's going to play what he needs to do. He's going to do what he has to do. I think we will see a different Chris Middleton. We will see a Chris Middleton that we would have seen in the Western Conference Finals. I believe that Drew Holiday, 
Bill, I, 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 I think he's going to impact the game. I don't know on which side of the ball. I think he's going to be solid, definitely on defense, making a better effort and everything like that. I think offensive, offensively, he will be a bit better, although I don't think he'll be that as impactful as on defense. I think Brook Lopez, um, take the open three if you can, but really and truly find yourself doing the pain, as Justin said, you know. Uh, we need you to be closer to the basket, even if it is to pass out of um, any cuts or anything like that. You can get double team if you do, which is rare. You can fight the open man. He's a good pass out of the double team. So um, I think the team is going to play better overall. I think that um, you are going to see it from the head down, which is Giannis Antetokounmpo going all down the team that they're going to be. There's going to be more impetus to play better, to do better, to be better, right? Um, so I have to say it and. You know, that's only hope that Bud can coach, particularly going down this the stretch, that he can somehow <laughs> just in the shake of his head, um, that he can make the adjustments, he can um know whom and when to play, give the ball to Chris Milton going down the stretch, um, you know, try to limit Yanis and to Kumpo touching the ball because you know they're gonna do a hockey Yanis and we don't want that, especially in the close game. So I think the Bucks are gonna win simply because their bat is against the ball and they need to win this game. Can't say, oh, we got game four. That's nothing. Like literally, this is it. If you don't win this game, you're psychologically out of it. So you can play however you want to play in game four. You can play however you want to play in game five. The point is to mentally keep that focus and that um that 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 drive going on as the series goes on and you don't all three. Nah, I I it has to be Milwaukee. You so, can go now. Oh, I can go now. <laughs> so, let me first start this off by saying Sunday six. I've said this from the start. Six. Interesting. Listen, I want to say, I want to make I want to make a comment, right? I think that what we, we, we did wrong is that we should have changed up the name and format of this show since we realized that Milwaukee and Phoenix were in the because this is what's this? This is a farce. Come on, oh Justin. Come on. You got Milwaukee in the bottom top of Sunday six. Oh I'm just teasing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So here we go. Um, this is going to sound odd as a Phoenix Sun saying this, but if Marsh and Neil look in their mail sometime next week, oh, sorry, Sunday, so this week, not only will they see wedding invitations, but they will see inside their mail <laughs> on top of that, the actual games I have. I call this series right down to the games. I said the Suns would win the first two games. Milwaukee, knowing that game three is an elimination game, will win game three. Suns win game four. Again, Milwaukee fighting for their desperate lives win game five because Phoenix has not won a single elimination game at home. And then Suns close out in game six. And I'm not going to change from that. I think, as I pointed out earlier, Chris Milton's, it's Chris Milton is so good at home. Like, and I think you're going to get that. I think Chris Milton goes off for 40 tonight. And you're going to see a very, very desperate Milwaukee team. The adjustments that had to be made, I think, coach but actually makes them know he's he can no longer ignore his assistants as have the reports being coming out of Milwaukee. I think you're gonna see them trapping Chris Paul off those pick and rolls and Chris Milton is going to come to play tonight. It is impossible for Drew Holiday to be any worse than he has been the first two games and it's really impossible. So all of that together all of that together I, I, I honestly think Milwaukee finds a way to pull it out tonight, but it's not going to be enough. Like, as I said, you are Milwaukee's not the greatest road team, and again, you are facing a two love deficit to a team that is very, very good on the road. So, I think Milwaukee does everything possible to pull up game three tonight, and then the Suns just get back to their winning ways on game four and eventually close them out in six. So, I'll see Milwaukee by three possessions tonight, but that can't take away. Suns in six. I think I'm going to go with five. Unless Giannis's injury was made more serious than it really is, I can't see the Bucks winning, winning put, picking up two games. So Suns in five, unfortunately. I, I like that, Marsha. That gives you one. Yeah, half. yeah. You, you would like that. <laughs> but I... <laughs> You had your title last season, and me and Marsha did not hear on you. No, no, we did not hear on you. What's we allowed you to wear yellow on this show. I look, I look like <laughs> Big Bird in bubbles. I don't. 
don't think we forgot. Yo stood up in bubbles and looked like Big Bird and me and Marsha had nothing to say. Let me win my title in peace, please. For this sake. Well, guys, you can let, let us know your predictions in the comments as well. You know, what are you calling for this series? First of all, who's going to win game three tonight? As well as who's your shoe in for the MVP, MVP title at this stage? And of course, who will win the NBA final series? You need to give us a scoreline, whether it's Suns in five, Milwaukee in seven. Who, who knows? Tell us what you think. But that's it for us here for this edition of This Just In. In case you joined us late, we had a very special interview with Terrence Mann of the LA Clippers at the start of the show. So if you missed that, as soon as we're finished, you can go right back up to the top and see everything Terrence had to say. You can like this video, share this video. Of course, you need to subscribe to this channel so you wouldn't miss any of the notifications, any of the updates, anything like that, and your subscriptions help us as well leave us a comment give us a like you know all of that jazz stuff that the influencers ask you to do mm. you can and find us on youtube yes share definitely with share friends. with your friends and family on your different profiles etc we're on facebook we're on twitter we're on instagram we're everywhere there's no excuse for you to not know what's happening on this just in so with that i would say good evening and we look forward to that game three coming up later i'm marcia voice I am the Justin of this Justin. Please don't mind Neil. Oh, you know, it, the, but this man even stealing my catchphrase. I am the original, the original Neil Hoy of this Justin. Um, that's it. I ain't got nothing else to say to you. Saying goodbye. <laughs> All right, good night, everybody. Well, good night. Good, good, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Do you think I have what it takes to be great? But still be humble and learn from my mistakes.